I'm Ksenia Kachur. I am the President and CEO of Calera Technologies. We develop solutions in the cancer space. And yes, that's very large, but let's look at what cancer is. It is a ravaging disease that affects everybody in some way, with statistics such as these. With one in four deaths in the US attributed to cancer, 1.5 million new cases every year. It's the second leading cause of death worldwide, and there are hundreds of billions in costs annually to hospitals and patients alike. But on the bright side of things, there are amazing discoveries that are being made. If you take a walk through a hospital, you'll see just how incredible these technological advances are. For example, robotic surgery, high precision, small incisions, less blood loss to patients, faster recovery time. We have uh, high precision targeted radiation treatments, so we have less dosage with higher efficacy in treatment of tumors. We have imaging modalities that allow us to catch tumors earlier and more accurately. We have digitized, digitized histology, which allows multiple experts from across the nation to give input on a, on a single case. And of course, we have targeted uh, chemotherapeutics that people are working on, targeted systems such as liposomes and virions that can be loaded with chemotherapeutics, delivered specifically to a, drug, or a tumor site, and that way we can eliminate side effects of chemo. But walking through a hospital, you'll also discover that this isn't, these advancements aren't the case everywhere. If you look at a pathology lab, you'll see, well, as you can see, messy, crude, user-dependent practices. And this is as described by practicing pathologists. These practices haven't been changed in upwards of 80 years. And this is significantly affecting patient outcomes. So why is it that all these advancements are being made in other areas of cancer research, but not in the path lab? Is it not that important? Well, let's take a look at what surgical pathology is. If a patient comes in with a suspicious lesion, they'll get it biopsied. If a malignancy is confirmed, the most common form of treatment is surgical intervention. In the operating room, the doctor will localize the tumor using an imaging modality or contrast agent, and then they hope to remove the entire tumor. Due to the messy nature of surgical procedures, the surgeon can't just look at the surgical cavity and determine whether every cell has been removed. But even one cell being left in the patient, the tumor can regrow in the coming years. Hence the necessity to look at the tissue that's been excised. So ideally, the surgeon will remove the tumor in red here with a healthy rim of tissue around it of about five millimeters. The implication is that if one of these tumor arms goes all the way to the edge of the tissue, then there's still cancer left in the patient. This is called a positive margin, and the assessment for this is called gross tumor assessment. Over 5.9 million patients go through this process every year. About one in three patients in certain cancer types have to come back in for another major reoperation just days following this major surgery. And one in five patients don't get this follow-up phone call, and the cancer regrows in the coming years. These awful statistics are the way they are because of current methods of tumor assessment. Our number one goal at Culera is to imp vastly improve these statistics and the way that tumor assessment is done in the path lab. We want to make it faster, more accurate, and affordable to hospitals. The end goal here is to allow for real-time analysis of margin status, so whether these positive margins exist. What this means is, currently, it takes up to three days to get this definitive margin status. It takes two days to process the tissue, an extra day for preparing it on a slide, and then a pathologist analyzes it, and then they pick up the phone, call the surgeon, and then call the patient back in. We hope to allow for this assessment process to be done while the patient is still on the operating room table. 
The first step to getting to this point is the development of our first technology. In the development of any technology and any solution, you need to talk to the people who it's going to affect the most, whose practices it'll affect the most, in this case, pathologists. So what we did in the beginning, just from the get-go, we sat down and we started asking them, what's, what's the need? And we started developing our technology. And we found that every single time we sat down, we started adding features to our technology. And we went through so many iterations until finally we had this highly complex device solving what we thought was a relatively simple, simple problem. So something just didn't feel right. We had a big meeting coming up with a couple key opinion leaders, and we just changed our entire approach. Instead of going in there and saying, look at this amazing technology, look how we're going to change the way you do things, we took it from the approach of, tell us exactly what you need. Let's really define the variability in the different elements of your practice and figure out together how we can best develop a solution to address this. So that's what we did. We changed from a highly complex technology that had multiple features to individual technologies. Now we have eight product lines, each with specific features that address needs in the space. And I'm excited to say that we are about six months from commercialization of our first product line. So what StableX does is add stability to tumor tissue for sectioning of the tissue. The tumor is placed into our gel container, and then our proprietary two-part polymer is poured on top. The polymer hardens within minutes, adding stability to the tissue, allowing for sectioning to be done quickly and accurately. So to give you an idea of why this, this specifically is important is if you've ever tried to cut a fatty steak, it's incredibly difficult to make thin, even sections throughout. Nickel thick sections is what they're shooting for. The difference between cutting a thin and a thick section when it comes to a tumor is the difference between catching a positive margin and not. Right now, it takes up to an hour to cut a two centimeter large uh, breast specimen. With our technology, it adds stability to allow the sectioning process to be done in less than 10 minutes with consistent, accurate sections. And then each section can be analyzed for positive margins, as shown here. But StableX is just the first step in reaching this end goal. As I mentioned, we have seven additional product lines that are based on our four patent-pending core technologies. So currently, StableX, shown here, uh, is in um, veterinary trials. And we're about to start our first clinical trial. And we're also in development of FIX, which is uh, a rapid fixative solution. So I mentioned that it takes Three, up to three days to get definitive margin status. Two of these days are, have to do with how long it takes fixative to penetrate tissue. So we've already shown a 40% decrease in time that it takes to fix the specimen. For, for a two millimeter thick section, we can have fixation under three hours, which means it opens the door for same day prognosis for patients. Also, we've identified that our proprietary gel has unique preservative capabilities. So right now, the two main ways to preserve tissue long term are freezing and formalin. Freezing, as I'm sure everyone knows, causes crystals. And these crystals often break up cellular architecture, leading to artifacts that affect the ability to uh, analyze the tissue down the road. And formalin doesn't preserve important, unique molecular signatures, such as RNA. We're developing our technology to do just that at room temperature. And then lastly, we have our inks product. So current inking methods, the, 
The reason that tumor specimens are inked is because they need to know how it was oriented, how the tumor was oriented in the patient's body. So if they catch a positive margin, they want to go back in and take tissue out from that exact spot. Right now, liquid inks bleed together and cause false positives. And if they're not sure where exactly uh, the positive margin came from, they're going to err on the side of safety. They'll call the patient back in, and they'll take out a lot more tissue. The last point that I'd like to make is that getting from delivery into development, or sorry, discovery into development, and then eventually delivery is not an easy process. It takes a lot of work, never enough time, and a lot of support. And the reason that we're here today, and actually the reason that our company is still in Arizona, is the, is the support that we've gotten here. The ACA grant opportunities, and largely our partner BioXL and our participation in the BioInspire medical device incubator has been instrumental in our growth. We've grown tremendously just in the last five months, and as I mentioned, we're six months from commercialization of our first medical device product, which is incredible. We never expected to be here. So I want to say thank you to BioXL and the whole bioscience community, and um, we look forward to bringing surgical pathology into the 21st century and helping define the future in this area of cancer. Thank you very much.